Hey everyone, welcome back to Nevada Partners. We're here at the Westside Community Incubator and I couldn't be any more excited than to uh, sit down with one of our very own Promise Startups members, Jolena Walker. Jolena, how's it going? It's going great, how are you? Hey, I'm so you know thankful. It's been a, it's been a mad dash. This yeah. entrepreneurial season has been sure. crazy. But, sure. Uh, I do want to start off by giving a special shout out to one of our mutual, you know, friends and coaches, Coach Amber J, who right. wrote the book The Key. Uh, Coach Amber J has been a member of ours now. I want to say about two years, and she planted the seed that Jolene and I should connect quite a while ago, and I'm so glad that we were able to connect about a year ago. Absolutely. Uh, Jolene has got an incredible background as a reproductive justice activist, as a reproductive justice policy advisor. Uh, she's been doing that for so long now yeah. and and now training the next generation of doulas which is so incredible yeah. can you share for everybody uh that's you know new to this uh you know uh what your experience has been like coming into nevada partners getting involved with promise startups and, and what that has meant for you absolutely so i have been a midwife in the las vegas valley for about 15 years and i've run all kinds of different businesses i had a, a little tiny store i had my own solo practice i've been a lactation consultant all those things are little mini entrepreneur moments but when my business partner carol reddick and i came together and started to build out the clv I knew that I, I needed way more support. I needed more help, more instruction, more community around me. And so when I met Coach Amber and she mentioned Promise Startup, of course I knew about Nevada Partners in the community just in general, but this was really the grounding that I needed. It was really the community that I was searching for. And walking into these spaces and seeing all these entrepreneurs, knowing that resources were being um, provided, but not only provided, but resources were being cultivated so that a person who's had no experience all the way up to people who are at that mentor level can grow and blossom. And I just kind of found community in this business community, which I hadn't had before. And I knew that I needed that in order to be a flourishing business and serve my community the way I knew it needs to be served. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's such a, it's such an amazing pleasure to, I, I remember when you were first telling me about the Birth Collaborative Las Vegas, uh, and now to see that you have students that have graduated out of that, mm -hmm. I mean, it's so impressive to see you do all of that in such a short amount of time. Uh, can you share a little bit about what BCLV does? Absolutely. So the Birth Collaborative Las Vegas is a uh, birth worker training organization. So we started out with our actually midwife assistant training program many years ago. But then as we started to reformulate and understand that doulas are a gateway drug to birth work, I don't know how else to say that. It is a way to train the next generation of birth workers and give them a large stable foundation in what birth work looks like. So as we train doulas and put them at bedside with our families, we are providing support, we are providing education, but more than anything, we are providing the community that our birthing families need so that they can look to that doula, they can look to their community and say, I need more support, I need help, I need to be heard, I need someone to listen to me. And the doulas are the soldiers on the ground. We are in the neighborhoods, in the grocery stores, mm -hmm. in the churches, in the synagogues, right? We are their community. And by moving this information out into community, we move out the expectation of what care should look like in our community, yeah. how we want to care for our mothers and for our families and our birthing folks. And that doula, that non-medical supportive person is on the ground, on the streets that they're walking. So they know their struggle. They know what their capacities are. And they also know where to find the resources because they've been there too. Yeah. So that is, that is where BCLV started to push the envelope on the care that we expect for our families. Right. And as we continue to grow, mm -hmm. we want to expand that into more lactation consultants more midwives, um, more everything when it comes to the work that doulas do and the work that birth workers need to support. So, yeah. That's fantastic. And, and you know, I've had uh, the great privilege of being able to, you know, be in the weeds with you a little bit. And that gave me exposure to learn what a doula is and learn why a doula is so important. Uh, but for anybody who's not as familiar, would you mind to just take it from the top and explain, yeah. you know, what a doula is and, and why they're so important in the, in the birthing process? Absolutely. So, 
a doula is a non-clinical birth support person. So the doula provides education, um, support both um, physical, emotional, and of course, resources to how birthing people and birthing families can access what they need in the community. They are working to empower our birthing families to get the births that they need, which includes advocating, sometimes in real time, and sometimes just through educating their own providers about what that birthing person wants, what they need. Um, and also, it is a very, uh, it's an intimate process. Giving right. birth is not yeah. something that you can just be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to give birth, and mm. that's it. It comes with all of the physical, all of the you know, emotional and chemical changes that happen to the body that most people don't know about. So a doula is that bridge between the known and the unknown, but also that emotional caring center that sees the person as that whole and recognizes what they need and can also give them the information to make informed choices yeah. about their birth. But we're also friends in the community, right? Like I said, we see you in the grocery store. I have been in this community for many years and one of the most startling experiences that happened to me was i was at one of my former jobs at nevada state college university now Ooh. um i had a dad in the i was giving a tour in the writing center and the dad was like bouncing on the balls of his feet and i'm like what is he smiling for his son was one of the first births that I ever did in this town. And he was coming oh, wow. in to be a college freshman. He's like, I know you don't recognize me, but you know, here's my baby. He's now a freshman. And the kind of impact that doulas make on families in mm -hmm. community is that kind of joy, that kind of love, that kind of surrounding and wrapping in, you know, you're, you're gonna be okay, we can do this kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And people don't forget that. They don't yeah. forget they birth. They don't mm -hmm. forget how they were made to feel. They don't forget people who helped them to stand up and who stood up for them. Absolutely. So duelists are soldiers. We're out here loving soldiers, though, not like, Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. Soldiers are <laughs> I mean, um, well, also. So, so one of the things I really love about BCLV and I mm -hmm. love about, you know, the entrepreneurs here at, you know, Promise Startups, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love the fact that so many of our entrepreneurs are diverse entrepreneurs looking at solving complicated community problems mm -hmm. and solving complicated community problems through social innovation or mm -hmm. social entrepreneurship, social impact often requires a bunch of different folks at the table. Absolutely. It requires the people that we serve. It requires the businesses that are doing can, that are able to do some of the service. It also requires a nuanced understanding of like, how do we navigate the government or how do we, you know, educate, influence the government to advocate to be, you know, better uh, at, you know, helping shape our society. Mm -hmm. It brings often nonprofits into the fold and all of these different organizations. But oftentimes to even have social impact, there's gotta be a social problem that yeah. is getting solved or mitigated. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about a little bit about what that social problem is that doulas around the nation are, mm -hmm. are helping solve. Absolutely. So we have a maternal and infant uh, health crisis in the United States, and it is impacting black, brown, and indigenous communities far more than it should. So yeah. black mothers are dying at three to four times the rate as white mothers. And this is not a... Mm problem that is isolated to only those who are living in poverty or those who are living in the margins. This is a cross sectors. Right. The other part of that is not just black mothers that uh, brought us to this. Indigenous mothers actually have some of the highest rates of maternal mortality and infant mortality within their communities. So doulas across the nation are being brought to bear in a society that often dismisses, um, maligns, and ignores the problems and the needs of Black, Brown, and Indigenous birthing people. But because community doulas are from the community, they understand what their communities are saying, what they're needing, where the gaps are. They can help to have that communication and bridge that gap with medical communities that have not always, um, and I should say historically, Mm -hmm. and continuously devalue the word and the experience of black and brown birthing people. So right. that is not just in Las Vegas. This is yeah. a, a move that's happening across the country because we have been in this maternal health crisis 
for a decade at this yeah. point, and probably even longer, but we've just been tracking it for that long. Yeah. And so across yeah. the nation, we see states advocating for doulas to be put on Medicaid rolls so that Medicaid clients who are, um, Medicaid is the largest mm -hmm. insurer, right? Um, can have access to that support, that resources and that care. I myself came into doula work in Boston 20 years ago okay. with an organization called the Birth Sisters. And it is a model that literally places doulas in community. And it's a model that I carried forward here because community doulas who work in community, who are not necessarily um, uh, being employed and guided by a medical system, help to work and, or sorry, help to support their communities with a lot more nuance, love, and capacity yeah. uh, than we see in other peri-professional um, jobs I for guess. sure so yeah. that's uh, that's what i'm thinking yeah yeah well thank thank you so much for sharing i mean i think the work that uh doulas in our community mm -hmm. are doing are so important you know um not to take up too much time but you know i hate it when i hear from my mom or my sister that they feel like they're not getting uh heard at the hospital and 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 they need to have that like male advocate there mm -hmm. and 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 so just getting to work with you has inspired me to be one of your future students and, and, <laughs> and be able to be that support for some of my community members as well. I'm going to say yeah, that please. that is so important because a lot of times when we talk about birth work, it really is uh, people thinking about we're only talking about women's work. Mm -hmm. We're only talking about that birthing woman, that birthing body. But the truth is without our partners, without our husbands, our sons, our grandfathers, right, saying, hmm, you're not allowed to treat my my person like that. Yeah. Um, this birth and this baby that's coming into this world is precious. Yeah. Um, and she needs to be heard. But a lot of times, dads don't know what to do in that <laughs> birthing situation either. Our partners don't know what to do. And so having that doula there, we're not just a doula for that birthing body, that woman. We are the doula for the family. Yeah. So if grandma has a question... And she can come and say to me, you know, you're my doula. Can you answer this for me? Yes, absolutely. And let me get some more information. Right. Doulas do more than just the work of the moment. I find myself oftentimes healing generational mm. pains, healing generational traumas, because I am able to speak to that grandmother and say, what happened to you wasn't right. That right. was not okay. Yeah. And we always want better for absolutely. the next generation. That's and great. that's really important for our community and for every generation birthing after. That's uh, that's thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I would love to ask, you know, before we bring up our special guest, mm -hmm. uh, just one more question or two more questions. Um, you know, what are some tangible ways that you feel like the Promise Startups community mm -hmm. has been able to help you, you know, accelerate your business? And, and would you recommend it for another entrepreneur? Absolutely. Okay. So first of all, yes, I do recommend it. Um, one of the things that I think has been really important and exciting to me is the different ways that education is being delivered. So within the Promise Startup, I can join online to a class. If I uh, can't make it up here, my car is not working, whatever, I can still hop on the live stream and watch a class. And that class could be from a person from SCORE. That class could be from a, you know, a business owner who's been in business for 20 years and has successes. It could be from mentors and coaches that provide a range of perspectives, but also a range of resources. So one of the exciting things that happened um, that happened coming out of my association with Promise Startup is that I joined other business chambers. And through those other business chambers, I was able to make connections um, with you know businesses across the valley. So if I hadn't started here and been, hey, there's the Urban Chamber, hey, there's the Vegas Chamber, hey, there's a the Latin Chamber, and then been connected to those and being able to make those introductions, to have these conversations, um, to go to DC and advocate for businesses in Nevada, that would have never happened. Because like I said, I've run businesses in this town before mm -hmm. and it never happened. But because of the time that I've spent here in Promise Startup, because of the relationships that this space has built, it allowed me to access more and it allowed me to see how far I could go because I didn't see that before. Amazing. Well, I'm excited to see you continue to go far and wide and, and make a positive impact in our community. Mm -hmm. And speaking of positive impacts in the community, what? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the uh, 
know, what's inspired you to train. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we've talked a lot about what's inspired you to train the next generation of doulas, but mm -hmm. you just had your first graduating class. Yes. Uh, how has that felt? Um, it was amazing. It was amazing. So a lot of hard work put in um, over this last year to bring this into fruition. Um, to see our graduates stand up in front of the class and provide that education back to us, to see them thrive, to see them grind, because this is a workforce development program. We want you in the community, yeah. right? And to see that spark of light just kind of grow and expand and to see where they are moving after they, you know, turn that tassel over, that is exciting to me because everything, um, that is worth moving forward starts with one student who decides that they're really, really willing to step out into this space and make a difference. And because it is part of our practice to always bring our people in, love on them, teach them, and say, this is, you know, you're next. You're next. It doesn't stop with me. It never stops with the teacher. It never stops with the student. It starts, it never stops. People are going to keep having babies. We're going to keep having these conversations. Yeah. And this graduating class came through with such um, excitement and such vigor and expanding into all the different areas that birth touches, lactation, education, uh, just community work and advocacy. I, I am so pleased with them and so pleased that they decided to join our program and bring their light to us as well, because it is more than I could have asked for, truly. That, that's incredible. Well, that, well, that's the perfect segue. It's yeah. time, I think, that we hear from one of your graduates, yes. uh, Brianna Jackson, if you want to come join us. Thank you, Brianna. And here's this mic. Thank you. Hello, friend. Hi. <laughs> I am so excited to interview you right now, mostly because I know you have some, a story to tell about a birth. Um, that you just went to. But let me start back with how we met. Uh, so let's talk about how we met. All right. So um, as everyone knows, I work at Nevada Partners and I just happened to be in the incubator one day, ear hustling as I always do, <laughs> trying to get information because you never know who's in here. Um, and I heard you speaking with Elias and I heard birth, doula, class. And I'm like, Ooh. So I pulled Elias to the side. I'm like, hey, what's that about? And he's like, let me introduce you. Yeah. And then the rest was history. Yes, I got to meet you. You said everything that I wanted to hear. And I just went for it. You were an inspiration. And you, the fact that you were in the space and you actually helped me to be intentional and be, you know, really keep grinding because your desire to become a doula, you're like, I'm ready. Are yeah. you ready yet? I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, was an inspiration to me and oh. it really did help me, you know, stay strong, stay on task. And so knowing that I had this real person right here in the space who's ready to make that next step and yes. ready. And I'm so, so glad I'm to like, hear I that. need to get ready. Wow, so. thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. I didn't even know. Yeah. Um, that, that's great. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So let me start with um, once you got into BCLV, and you had taken a class before you'd taken a training yes. prior to BCLV. Yes. What was the difference for you on the training that you took before BCLV and the BCLV community doula, the perinatal community doula training? So the biggest difference for me was the last, the first training that I took, it was like sunshine and butterflies, right? So then I get to BCLV and it's like, no, this is really what's going on. Yeah. Um, that was the biggest difference for me because when you speak about birth, yes, it's a beautiful thing, but there are things that go on um, behind the scenes that people don't even know that's like really bad. Um, and I feel like BCLV pretty much painted the picture for me mm -hmm. um, and made me know that birth is more than just being a doula. Mm -hmm. It's reproductive justice, it's lactation, it's all types of support. It's so many areas that you can go with birth that it's actually exciting. It's really exciting because it's nonstop. It, that's right. It's expansive. Yeah. You can get to, you can make different stops on that birth journey. And that, for me as a co-founder of BCLV, 
we recognize that not everybody's going to want to get up at three o'clock in the morning and spend 24 hours at a birth. But there are so many ways that we can serve as educators and as supporters. So what was your favorite component? Where, where did you gravitate towards? Um, the reproductive justice segment, okay. um, which made me know that I'm going to full out say that I am not a person that wants to get up at three in the morning and i realize that within my training which is okay yes absolutely um but the educational piece i want to be a part of that childbirth educator because if i can give the information um that's good enough for me awesome. i want it to trickle down if i give you information you'll go tell someone else and tell someone else and then you'll want to keep learning about it mm -hmm. and then you will keep coming back to my classes absolutely <laughs> yes. spoken like a true teacher <laughs> <laughs> right so Let's get into uh, your birth that you went to. Of course, we have to always be careful when we're talking about our clients mm -hmm. because we do um, observe HIPAA uh, regulations. So we're not going to be getting into the nitty gritty. But when when you got the call to come to the birth, what did that feel like? So it felt really crazy. I got the call while I was at work. Um, which I was about to get off. So it worked out perfectly, but I got the call and I was stuck. I'm looking at my desk and I'm like, <laughs> what do I do? I don't know what to do. And then my brain kicked back in like go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up leaving work, um, going to the birth. Um, by the time I got there, um, the mother, she was just chilling. She's just like on chill mode, eating, walking around, you know, just waiting for her birth. Um, once I got there, I still didn't know. Luckily, there was another birth doula there. Mm -hmm. So I kind of piggybacked off of her um, and watched what she did. And she explained a lot of things to me. Nice. Um, so I pretty much just went with the flow of everything. Right. Yeah. All right. So you're working, you have a, another birth doula there that you're watching. The baby is born and in birth work, there's a huge rush of oxytocin. Um, oxytocin is the love hormone. Oh my God. And it is an amazing feeling. And a lot of times you, uh, you're, you're floating on a cloud after that birth. You're, you're going home like, wow, she did that. That was amazing. Yes. Uh, and then you take a nap and you have to go back to work. So let's talk about that transition because that's real life when it comes to yes. doula work. Tell me about how you navigated that next day and wh what that. Um, to the birth, leave the birth, Four in the morning, have to get back up at seven to do the same thing again and come back to work. Mm -hmm. That was the hardest thing I probably done. Um, honestly, I was at work on cloud nine because I was still feeling it. I'm like, <laughs> I kept, but I had to keep moving. Yeah. I'm moving, moving, moving. By the time I got home, I crashed. Yeah. Like I couldn't do anything for anybody. Like I just had to rest, mm -hmm. but that transition from work to having to go to a birth, mm -hmm. it's serious. Mm -hmm. You must rest yes. afterwards. You yes. must. You can't do anything but rest. You're going to crash. Absolutely. So what in your training with BCLV, when we're talking about some of the nuances of being a doula and some of the not just the, you know, sunshine and rainbows, what are some of the techniques that uh, were provided to you to help you navigate the realities of being a doula? Plan ahead. Okay. Plan ahead was a big one. Um, so that means get your child care together. What are you going to do when you get that call? Uh -huh. All of that needs to be pre-planned. That was the biggest help for me. Um, if it's not pre-planned, pre you will be in shambles. <laughs> you really will be because um, birth is unpredictable. Mm -hmm. You never know when it's going to happen. So if you can be ready at all times, then you'll be fine. Okay. Well, to kind of close up and wrap up, you have experienced BCLV's eight-week training. Um, you are now a um, 
on your path to becoming an enrolled doula for the state of Nevada. You have seen a birth. You have experienced the post-birth uh, recoil that is coming down after a big oxytocin boost. Yes. And the reality is has to bring uh, your lens into focus. How do you move forward in your doula journey from here? How do you move forward? What's next for you? Um, what I do want to say is that first birth made me a doula. Like <laughs> once I completed that, I felt like I'm a doula. Okay. So my journey now is, like I said, I, I, I'm not going to say I wish. I'm going to be a childbirth educator. But I'm also going to play on the birth side, too, because it is needed. Mm -hmm. It is needed. I don't want to just discount that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I want to start my road to childbirth education. All right. Thank you, Brianna. And thank you for being in our first cohort. I loved it. I loved every part of it. Thank you guys so much for even providing that for us. That was amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> Carol's amazing. And I love you guys. Thank, thank you. you. We love you, too. All right. Thank you so much. Okay.